From the City of Angels, you are listening to the James Salazar Media Podcast. On today's episode, we're going to talk about some politics, so let me strike the music, and I'll meet you on the other side. That's one small step for man, one by a leap for mankind. Say hello to my little friend! No, I am your father. I'd like to take this chance to apologize to absolutely nobody. And welcome to the James Salazar Media Podcast. I am your host, James Salazar, a.k.a. The Media those who are listening for today, why do I call myself the media? Um, because of my uh, my friends. My company's called James Salazar Media. As you know, the podcast is called the James Salazar Media Podcast, so they call me the media for short. So I've taken it on because so much of the media today is so opinionated. It's no longer telling the news and... Is these people who we have today are what we call the media, then I'm the media. You're the media. Anybody can be the media because the standards are so low. But I'm going to raise the standard by giving you objective and opinionated journalism all at the same time. Is it possible? We're going to attempt it. But most, to be real, most of my... uh, most of what I'm going to say is how I see things. So let's go on from there. So we're watching the Rittenhouse trials. A man uh, shot three people, killed two. He says it's in self-defense. Kyle Rittenhouse, I think his name. Kyle? Is it Kyle? Hold on. Let me check. Yeah, his name is Kyle. Um, during um, This all happened in Kenosha, Wisconsin. And now it's gone to trial. Um, it's a compelling trial, but t- there are some things that are unfortunate. Speaking politically or going forward, it's a clear case of self defense, but. If someone's an active shooter and you're attempting to stop an active shooter with a gun or to pull it, does that guy have a right to defend himself from you? Because arguably the people thought Kyle Rittenhouse shot the other person point blank. Okay. Um, they didn't know it was self defense. It just seemed like a kid with an AK forty seven, this young man, killed somebody, and people started to run after him. And then they tried to take his gun. One tried to shoot him, and he shot them back. It just makes me wonder if if he was a terrorist and he shot somebody out of ill will, does he go to jail for that but not go to jail for the other because he was defending himself? So it's a little weird to me. We're assuming that those people knew this was a conservative protecting a property and he defended themselves and they said, screw this guy who defends himself, let's go get him. I don't think they said that to themselves. I think they said, oh, he shot this guy dead, let's stop him. And in the course of trying to stop him, he kills another man and blows away the other guy's arm. So he technically has a right to defend himself. So 
So I guess depending upon the what he did before determines whether he's defending himself or he's killing more people who are trying to stop him. That seems weird to me. It does. But at the end of the day, if I have to side, I have to side on defending yourself. I have to side on the Second Amendment. I have to decide on defending yourself when somebody's trying to take your weapon. And if someone it, uh, raises their gun at you, you should be able to defend themselves. And here's the thing. At this moment, if this individual is running away, he knows that it was in self-defense, but people don't see it that way and they're going to try to stop him physically. Maybe killing him would be the most efficient way to stop him. He was in fear of his life and he had a right to defend it. So I go back and force on this. I just don't like... Like I said, I got a side on defending yourself. Always. And at the end of the day, there's a lot of people who are going after him who were not armed. And you just don't run to a man who is armed. You let the police do that. And if you are someone who carries a gun, maybe... And you've been properly trained, I say maybe you and you think it's an active shooter, it might be morally uh, imperative for you to stop that person before they kill somebody else. But this testimony had a lot in testimony. Some it sounded like one of the people who were trying to stop Kyle Rittenhouse who chased him down were saying, were making threats towards people saying uh, they were going to kill him and shoot him. And Kyle Rittenhouse and other uh, witnesses said that those people were planning to murder him. And he knew his self-defense. And the other people. So it's very interesting. It's just not as clear as people will like it. But at the end of the day, you have to side on defending yourself in that moment that you have a right. If you have a gun and someone comes up to you and tries to take that gun or puts a gun at you, they have made a mistake. The only people who should be able to do that was the law. And, if the, and he was trying to run to the law. Not like those people knew that. And he would have surrendered his guns to the police for sure. So he says, so, but to me, if we're taking each situation by themselves and judge each situation, each shot or each encounter with an individual, you have to judge whether it's self-defense or not. And I think Kyle defended himself and it falls and it's a clear case. Even though, like I said, it doesn't sit well with me on future situations where people try to stop a shooter and they get shot and it is considered self-defense. I'm pretty sure motor plays a big part in it for everyone. Premeditated, right? Was he planning to commit premeditated murder were the crowd planning to commit premeditated murder based upon him murdering somebody else or defending himself? He gets deep in the woods. But here's another thing I want to say about it. I think it is clear self-defense and he should be acquitted. But I don't think his acting on stage crying was real. I can hold the same positions. I mean, for some reason, people think you either believe his cry his crying was real and genuine, and you believe he's defending himself, or 
he's either fake and he's a murderer. No. I think his performance on on the stand was was pretty cheesy and inconvincing um, considering his emotions that he was showing. His sound, it, it felt like bad acting to me, but I still think he should be acquitted. I can hold both views. Uh, he, I mean, he didn't, he couldn't get, he couldn't produce a tear. So, I mean, a lot of people are saying, oh man, it, it was so devastating. His crying is so devastating is that uh, he, it, it, it dried up his tears quickly and, and his face was exploding with expressions because he's been holding it in. And, um, there's been people who say because he's a bad actor, that means he, uh, is wrong about everything. It doesn't mean that either. It just means he's a bad actor. Um, he felt the need to do that. And at the end of the day, it didn't help his plight. I know, because I know a lot of people who, who think he did the right thing, but are not, uh, who, who are snickering and laughing over his uh, crying on the, on the stand. So that's that. That's all I'm going to say about that. Um, we'll see if he gets acquitted. You never know. I mean, I know the government... The governor is planning to bring in the National Guard because they are expecting people to act terrible over it. They didn't get their way, so they're going to act bad and they're going to destroy things. So, we'll see what happens there. And we'll see the narrative, again, probably from conservatives complaining about liberals from destroying stuff. Right now, liberals are, are the ones pointing out what happened at the Capitol. We'll see what happens at after this verdict. So. Also, um, looks like the kids' uh, vaccine is about to come about, come around, and many parents are going to be faced with the uh, choice to uh, vaccinate their kids, and I'm pretty sure public schools are not going to let your kid. There's probably going to be a deadline, but they're not going to let your kids be a part of uh, the school if your kid's unvaccinated. So there's going to be major decisions. You know, I believe everybody should be vaccinated. I believe COVID-19 is real. I caught it. It was very difficult. and But I do not think it should be mandated. I don't think you should force people to put something in their body. And they're going to have to reap the consequences of that. And I do believe that public schools have to side on caution. But we get into a point where you can't buy goods and services unless you're vaccinated. You can't go into a supermarket unless you're vaccinated. That's sort of fascist. It's like card-carrying fascist when people can't buy goods and services unless they put something in their body and they show a piece of paper sh that sh shows that they did that is textbook fascism <laughs> no matter how you spin it look at there's some people believe that for the greater good of the community and society sometimes you need to be fascist and if that and if that's what you think, then um, own it. But you can't have your cake and eat it too. You can't create fascist laws and then say, oh, I'm, I'm against fascism. You're not. Um, you think uh, fascism is good in certain people's hands. It's not good over here, but it's good over here. Let me just tell you, our forefathers didn't think that. Um, the Constitution's there, my friends, because... When you feel the need and the urge to do something fascist, you stop and you side on the side of freedom. Our forefathers thought and believed and written down that there's really no good reason to stomple, trample on people's rights. Now, we're unsure that Requiring, mandating a vaccine is against the Constitution and is going through the courts, but what it clearly is, is fascist. And um, those who believe in the mandate 
um, need to be comfortable with that word because that's exactly what it is. And what I was getting to before is that with Americans, there's a social contract where we all act in everyone's best interest because it's a choice. When you take away that choice, you have now made it a moral position to stand against it. And that's the major problem with the mandate. It doesn't get you to where you want to be. It's un insightful of how the American mind works, good, good, bad, or indifferent. You have to take in what works and forcing people to take the vaccine, you've now made it not about the vaccine, and you made it about freedom and oppression. And people have to take a moral stand. It's not even about the freaking virus or the vaccine anymore. It's about you implementing something that you have no right to implement. Well, we'll see. And it's bad leadership. It is not understanding the leverage that the government has and it doesn't have. It doesn't have the leverage to force people to put things in their body. You can for a while try to mandate this, but there's been less vaccines, people taking vaccines. So tons of people who don't believe in it. And if they want to run the risk of challenging COVID, that's on them. I definitely believe that if you do not have the vaccine and you try to sue anybody over COVID, I don't think you have a ground to stand on. But I'm telling you, it's the old saying, you get more mouth opens for honey than you do for vinegar. He should appeal to the patriotism of Americans to make it better. But now, because you're forcing it, now they have to use their patriotism to stand against it. And that is just being unthoughtful as leaders. Doesn't matter how stupid you think it is. And here's the unthoughtfulness about it all, is that most people believe in fascism until it's presented to them. And pushed upon them. Then they got a problem with it, right? Oh, I'm for fascism for the unvaccinators. But if it's on something that you value, you're suddenly, oh, man, God, I'm anti-fascist. Anti uh, and that's the problem with fascism. It's so subjective. And by the way, while that's happening, you're losing your rights. You know, it's the old saying. They came for the... Uh, the gay people, but they weren't for me. But they, but but I'm not gay. Uh, they came for the Jews, and um, I'm not a Jew, so it doesn't matter. They came for the gypsies. I'm not a gypsy, and then they came for me, and there was no one left to defend me. Because all the people who thought it was fascist are now gone. No one wakes up. I mean, no one wakes up. And says, hey, I'm going to be fascist today. There's always a good reason to be fascist. For the greater good of the society. People who implement fascism think they are heroes. Do you get that? They think that they're right. And heroes are proclaimed by whatever administration that's in. So therefore, we should have overarching laws based upon the value of the United States that can never be trampled on because there's always somebody who thinks it's a good idea to take away the rights of the people for the betterment of society. And they would be wrong. And our bumbling... Falling asleep, inept, uh, worst president that we've ever had, 
and that's saying a lot, uh, Joe Biden just doesn't get it. He's someone who believes people should be forced to do what he thinks is right. There is a saying by uh, C.S. Lewis, it says, and I paraphrase, of all tyrannies, the tyranny done for your own good could be the most oppressive. For those who terrorize you for your own good, do so without cease, and they do it with the approval of their conscience. It's a brilliant statement. It is so bonkers that in our society that we can feel our way to an answer. I feel like this, I feel like that, and, it, and we make room for it. But what we don't have room for is disagreement. I wonder if it's someone who is fluid can say, uh, I'm a, a non-binary guy who doesn't believe in vaccines. That's part of my gender fluidity. I mean, there's so many, like 150 definitions, right? Why can't one of those be definitions of someone who doesn't believe in vaccines? Because it's not based on science. It's based on how you feel. Your gender is based upon how you feel. So if you can make a gender uh, situation or, or, or gender uh, definition based on not feeling like you should have a vaccine, how is that not justified? I guarantee you it's not justified because people want you not to be woke. They want you to obey. They want you to see it their way, no matter how stupid it is to see it their way. So th we are creating definitely a less kinder society right now. And people feel and feel emboldened to discriminate against people who want control over their body concerning vaccines. And we're, this gets into the argument. Uh, uh, it goes back and forth. If, if you believe in, uh, and this is, this is the, the situation, if you believe in mandates, then why can't, and you believe people should be forced to do something with your body, why can't people force you not to have abortions? Right? And on the other hand, if you believe people should be able to do what they want with their body concerning vaccines, why can't you, they be able to do what they want with their body concerning pregnancy? So we're in a double standard on both sides right now. Oh, the humanity... I have an answer for that. The answer is that, um, and it's sort of not an answer, but there's a life. We believe that's a life in you, and it should be valued. But their argument is, we need to value people's lives, whether they want to value it or not. And and this is the weird part. I don't understand. I mean, if there are elderly people, they should have got the vaccine first, right? So when you say. Uh, the unvaccinated, unvaccinated, it can take it to their grandparent or the older person. Well, those older people should already have the vaccine and the booster. So what we're doing, we are forcing people to make the decisions that we want to. And we'll see it in the course if it works out that way. But I think in reflection, a lot of people are going to pretend they were not for the vaccine because how embarrassed they will be that they were fascist. And they're going to pretend like they never were, that they were on the side of freedom. You just watch. Just remember who was for the, the, uh, the mandate. I don't think anything should be done with them. But there's one thing they shouldn't get is to pretend 
that they didn't, that they weren't. Because I guarantee you, five years from now, people are going to say, oh yeah, that vaccine mandate, it was terrible. Uh, we should have never done that. And if you probably look back on their <laughs> Facebook feed, they're like, they were all for it. Yeah, you can't let people get away with that. You got to say, hey, you were for it. I don't believe people should be canceled, but we shouldn't let people pretend they, they were they were worth for something that history would look back and uh, be disappointed. Let me tell you, the right side of history is to take the vaccine. To be on the right side of history is to take the vaccine and kill COVID-19 as fast as possible. You step over to the wrong side of history when you mandate it. Plain and simple. When you're forcing people, and at the end of the day, when you make laws that force people to do something and they don't comply, it equals, it always equals men with guns coming to enforce it or sending you to jail. Good, bad, or indifferent. That's what ends up happening. So, uh, it's what I think. My advice to you, if you're unvaccinated, get vaccinated. COVID is a real thing, and it could kill you. But it's on you if you die. And I don't think you should be forced to take it. And I will say to the people who believe in mandates, you're being fascist. And if you were against Donald Trump and his so-called fascist tendencies without even putting one fascist law out, if you were sensitive to that, my friends, I would tell you, you're a fucking hypocrite. Because Donald Trump didn't put any fascist laws up. Granted, he talked about it. Should have got you worried. And people should have been worried. But Joe Biden is actually doing it, and those who believe in the mandate actually believe it. So I'm worded out that these people who were supposedly against fascism are now being fascists themselves. Well, it just tells me that their concern for Donald Trump to be fascist wasn't a concern at all. They were just concerned that he was being fascist, and there wasn't anybody in power that they like being fascist. So we've been saying fascist a lot. I'm going to end it there. I don't want to fill your mind too much with politics because there's much greater things in life. You know, when we got into the election cycle, it was all about. It was, it was like every day you had something to talk about. And it's just depressing looking at the president and he's falling asleep, farting during a press conferences, yelling like an old curmudgeon. And he's, you know, he's making bad decisions that have major ramifications for years in people's lives. People have actually died in the droves, in droves based upon the decisions that he's made, especially in Afghanistan. Thousands of people have died or are going to die because of how he handled that situation. So, he is abandoning people. He's in bad, and he is abandoning the American people by closing down industries where there's no alternative uh, for the energy or for jobs for people to pick up to just cutting cutting jobs and saying deal with it i don't care if you lose your house i don't care if you lose your car this is your new reality goodbye it's not like the car who put the horse and made them obsolete that's not what's happening here you're having someone from outside of the economy making decisions for the economy and cutting jobs it is the worst, the worst president we've ever had. He's worse than Jimmy Carter. And that's saying something. Look it, Jimmy Carter is a great man. He builds houses, one of the nicest people, but he was a terrible president. We're just talking about terrible, terrible presidents. We're not talking about their personality. Donald Trump might have had the worst personality of any president ever. But he ran the economy successfully. 
people were doing well. He ran our world influence better than this knucklehead. This time around, it can't be a, par a popularity contest. It was a popularity contest because Joe Biden wasn't Donald Trump. People were willing to vote for Joe Biden because people were exhausted by Donald Trump's personality. And that was a big mistake the Americans made. We shouldn't make that mistake. We should hire somebody. We should hire somebody as president who, who can run the country like Donald Trump. But um, be a person that we can like. It can happen. There is definitely people. The Democrats, the, look at Republicans. Yeah. It is yours to lose. The Democrats are doing so awful, so awful, that it would be easy to put anybody in there to take the presidency. I can name a few off my head. My favorite is Dan Crenshaw. He should run for president of the United States. For sure. He would win hands down. But if you put Donald Trump there again, people may not. It's like a 50-50 chance that he might become president and he might not. And that's what we need right now for somebody who has like a 75% chance to take the Oval Office back because Joe Biden so disastrous. So, just what I think. That's what I think. I mean, we can do better, America. We can do better than Donald Trump, and we're going to do better than Joe Biden. Definitely better than Joe Biden. Because at the end of the day, it is the results that matter, and his results are disastrous. But people will resent somebody who does a great job but treats you bad. They don't care about it. They don't. Unless you're making them a lot of money, um, they'll look, they won't look the other way. Though Donald Trump fixed the economy, the power of the media was way too strong. And it made it, and here's the key, they made it, unintellectual to vote for Donald Trump. But they did that. They made you get there emotionally, not factually. I didn't want to vote for Donald Trump. I can't stand the guy. But I voted for him nonetheless because I knew on paper the Democrats are the worst at running a country. Every ghetto in our country is run by Democrats. Do you get that? Every ghetto run by Democrats have the highest disparity between rich and poor. Minority are not graduating high school. They're dropping out. Or if they do, they're coming out with a, with a very low actual education because the schools that Democrats are so terrible. So they got you to get there not to vote for Donald Trump emotionally based upon his personality. That, granted, is it's terrible. They made you ignore uh, jail reform that he did, um, how he calmed down all the crazy world leaders, how the economy worked for black people, Hispanic and Asian people alike. He did great things. He said stupid things. And they had you focus on the things he said, not the things he did. And let me tell you, for you going forward and all of us, never trust what people say. Always trust what people do. The, what they do is who they are. And at the end of the day, Uncle Joe is a fool. Look. I don't know if people can get past that Donald Trump didn't accept the election. 
It doesn't sit well with people. It doesn't. It is uh, sore losing. It leaves a bad taste in people's mouths. He's definitely lost uh, Republicans for that. Nobody hates a sore loser. People love people who take their comeuppance, make the adjustments, and come back and win. That's what people like. But someone who won't accept how they lost does not sit well. It won't sell, sit well with the moderates, and it won't sit well with some Republicans. And this is why I think it would it's a 50-50 chance that Donald Trump can become president again. And Joe Biden and the Democrats are so disastrous because if it wasn't, people would just move on to another candidate. People never vote in the, a previous president unless you're Teddy Roosevelt. So let's not be emotional voters. Let's do what's best for the country. It's not in bringing people who don't believe in things like uh, capitalism is bad. That would be uh, an idiot at the extreme measures. Nothing gets people out of poverty faster than capitalism. My friends, if you're talking to somebody who doesn't believe in capitalism, they ultimately don't like poor people. They want them to stay poor. Because there's nothing, and I mean there's nothing, that take, gives people out of poverty faster than capitalism. Socialism doesn't create money. It only spends the money capitalists make. So I don't even understand why socialists are against capitalism. How are they going to spend money? That's the problem with Russia. They had no capitalism. So they were going to, it was eventually going to fall. Who was going to make the money that they can tax? Uh, I digress. Hey, you can follow me on any of my accounts on social media platforms. Just type in James Solis on media. I should come up. I'm on all of them pretty much except TikTok. I might get into TikTok, but I don't think so. But, you know, if I, if I think it can help me, I will. Definitely. Also, yeah, just type in James Solis on media. If you, have, if you disagree with anything I said, and this is a political part of the podcast, I have no doubt you disagree. Uh, just put it in an email, and I, I will address your disagreement with an answer. Go right ahead and do that. So, my friends, if the storms of life come against you and you find yourself on your knees, stand tall. Take a look at that storm and say what your, my sensei Jack Burton always says. Give me your best shot. Strike the music. Come get some!